Hi, my name is Lindy Jung. I am a science fiction and fantasy writer, and welcome back to the Project Mods writing series. Today's video is sponsored by Parade. I will get to them in a little bit, but first, let's catch up a little bit. As you guys might know, I officially finished the first full draft of mods, which just in case you didn't know, is my Dark Academia adult fantasy. This marks the first full draft of an adult fantasy I've written in my life. I've written large amounts of other ones before, but never finished. My plan from here on out is to revise this book and query it to literary agents. And this week, we're just gonna kind of focus on prepping to do those two things. So we're going to be working on the query letter and the synopsis, as well as reading over the book and taking notes for those big picture revisions. My general process for that is to sort of jot down a rough version of the series of events, kind of like a reverse outline as I read through the project. We're gonna see where it's messy. I know it's messy in some places. I've been trying not to think about it too much, but we're gonna see where it's messy, where it's good, and what can be fixed and how. My goal for revisions as a whole is to finish that first major revision by April 2nd, which is when I move again. I know I just can't stop doing things for the plot, but I'm moving for grad school and my school starts in June, so moving in April. I would love to get that revision done so that way I can spend April and May sort of focusing on getting those query letters out, polishing up that querying package, and just getting started on that whole process. Normally, I definitely would not recommend querying after just one revision, but again, this book has gone through a bunch of different iterations, even though it was never fully complete before this. I've also been represented before, so I left my previous agent in June of last year, and I'm seeking new rep, which generally, from what I've heard, kind of makes things a little bit easier or a little bit smoother in terms of seeking representation because I've kind of proven that I know my way around the trad pub world even though I haven't actually put out a book yet. If I seem not too stressed about querying, that's because I'm not. Maybe it's like arrogant or something, but I honestly, I've done this before, so I kind of know my way around it. Also, because response times in general across the board with TradPub have been really slow lately, I feel like I'll definitely have at least a couple months after I send out my first batch of queries to sort of freshen up the manuscript as needed, and that additional pressure of like waiting to hear back from literary agents and never knowing if or when I'm gonna get a full manuscript request, that'll sort of put that pressure on me. And I tend to do my best work under pressure, so that kind of works out. Now that that's covered and we know what we're doing today, time for a little bit of a life update. So as you can tell, I am back in California, back in my parents' home, not for long, but it's sort of a transitional phase right now. I just spent the last six months in Southeast Asia. I was backpacking for about two months and then I was teaching in Thailand for four and I'm very, very happy to be back. It is sort of a stressful transition, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I got very used to my social life in Thailand and now that's kind of a missing piece for me. And of course I have to pack to like move my whole life to a different state for the next couple years. But in all that, in all of the like shuffling my belongings around and sort of taking stock of what I need and don't need, I've realized that I desperately need new underwear. And that is where today's sponsor comes in. Parade is a sustainable and inclusive underwear brand and they were kind enough to send me a range of their products. And they asked me to pick my favorite and share it with you guys. And that is definitely going to be this vintage soft triangle bralette. This is made with their new cotton fabric and it is so soft. Like I don't think I've ever owned any undergarment that was as soft and as plush as this. It has a ton of stretch. It doesn't feel too tight on me at all. Lately, I've been focusing on making more conscious decisions in terms of my consumption and purchasing of goods, and I love that Parade is eco-conscious. The new cotton fabric type is a sustainable alternative to regular cotton and uses 95% less water to produce. It is also antimicrobial, which is just amazing. Like, she truly does it all. The vintage soft triangle bralette and other styles of bras, bralettes, underwear, and clothing are all available on their website. They have tons of sales all the time, and today I'm offering you guys a discount code for 40% off. It is LYN40, and you can also use the link in the description box below. If you're looking to refresh your underwear drawer or even just pick out a couple of new options, then I highly recommend checking out Parade. This is probably the softest and most comfortable undergarment I have ever put on my body, so highly, highly recommend. Okay, so that is what we're doing today. I'm going to head out and make a little bit of lunch. I have just missed cooking so much. I could not cook at all in Thailand other than the electric kettle pasta that I kept making, which is not, that's not cooking. That is not what Remy the Rat would want. So I'm gonna make some nachos and then we're gonna start reading my book. Why am I kind of scared? I guess tomorrow is the day that I'll look at the query materials a little bit more. Once I've done a full read through, the synopsis will be a lot easier to tackle. And that's pretty much it. So I will catch you guys in a little bit. See ya, bye. By the way, I got 
a water activated eyeliner palette. This is not sponsored. I've been doing my eyeliner. You just kind of can't see with my glasses on the big camera, but I did a little leaf thing to match <laughs> my nails. I'm so bad at showing nails, my nails and rings. Yeah, it's just been super fun to play around with. So you're gonna see some kooky eyeliner looks a lot. It is currently Wednesday, March 6th. I am going to officially dive in and start my read through of The Moth's Draft and we're gonna see what is going on. I think I'm gonna do a very cursory read through, like not super detailed, not focusing on the line level at all, just focusing on those overarching plot beats and sort of taking stock of them. As I probably have alluded to before, I feel like acts one and two are very solid. My focus now as I read through these acts is to figure out what setup I'm putting down and where I can potentially pay that off better in acts three, four, and five. So it's gonna be like taking a look at the book as a whole and looking at the big picture things. So yeah, that's my morning. I went to the bank today. Um, that's why I look kind of like an art teacher. I have my mangosteen tea. I'm definitely happy to be home. I would say that I'm feeling a little bit down because I got used to a very like certain amount of social activity. You know, because I was on the same schedule as like my three friends back in Thailand, we hung out like all the time. I saw my neighbor and close friend there every day. So it's kind of hard to like adjust to sort of being on my own again and going back to my like independent schedule. So that's how I've been feeling lately. I felt like really down in the dumps about it yesterday, but I do feel a lot better now. What else? Oh yeah, I've been playing with my eyeliner a lot. I did little stars today. I like a subtle but like cute artsy look. I usually wear relatively minimal makeup, but I like to sort of spruce things up with a little detail, a little pop. So that's been a really fun part of my daily routine the past couple days, just playing around with my water activated eyeliners. Yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this manuscript and see what's going on. Bye. We're back with this angle, which I feel like it helps with the lighting a little bit, actually. It's Wednesday evening. I'm about to wash up and go to bed, but I spent the day kind of focusing, kind of not focusing. Honestly, I've realized that because I got so used to like working on writing in my school office in Thailand, it's like very hard to focus and home is not a super productive environment for me. I did manage to get some work done. I got through about two and a half chapters of the first act. Um, making notes, sort of jotting down the sequence of events, like basically every scene or beat that happens, I'm writing down in a little notebook. But it's just that home is so full of distractions for me, especially now, especially that I've been away for a couple months, six months actually, half a year. There are just so many different things to do, to get done, to play with, to mess around with. That just makes it really hard to stay focused on something like writing. So I think tomorrow I'm really gonna buckle down. Oh, the other thing is I'm super jet lagged and for the past like, However many days I've been back, I've ended up taking a mid-afternoon nap every single day. I am not a nap person. I respect naps for other people, not for me. They totally throw me off, so I somehow have to stop doing that. The other problem with that is that I go to sleep really late and wake up really early because of the nap, so. But what I want to do tomorrow is like try in the first half of the day to really like focus on this read through and try to get as much of it done as I can. And then if I really am not focusing well, then I'm going to go out of the house and try to find a cafe or something. So I don't necessarily wanna to go to a cafe every day, spend eight bucks on a coffee, have that build up over all the days of the week to like 40 bucks a week, you know? That on top of like gas money and other expenses, it's just too much. Um, and yes, coffee is like $8 here, like six to eight. But yeah, that's how it's going. My read through, um, honestly, I'm not too impressed with my first couple chapters. <laughs> I haven't really like looked at them since I sent them off, but there is a lot that I want to fix and most of it is like line level stuff like just phrasing and the voice and the way that it flows. I think the flow is a little bit off from what I want to hear in my head, but it's all very fixable and workable so we're gonna do that. Right now I have my Google Doc just in like the commenting only mode so I'm not actually making any edits right now. I'm just doing read through, taking notes on paper with pen. I don't know, I really want to be done with that by the end of this week, but we'll see. I'll keep updating you guys as things come along. Yeah. Yeah, and that is my update. I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Bye. So 
it's Friday, March 8th, and I think tomorrow is the day I'm gonna wrap up this vlog. Not gonna lie, for something as simple as a read-through, progress has been really, really slow, like much slower than I'd like it to be. This being my first week back, yeah, like literally I was in Bangkok like a week ago. So the adjustment has been difficult, but I think I also got very accustomed to my schedule. Like working as a teacher, obviously your schedule is very much set for you. And now having control of my own schedule, it's like a little bit of an adjustment there as well. I think my lessons, my takeaways in terms of like productivity and all that from this week, sorry about the glare on my glasses. You know what, let's just, let's do that. I think my lessons from this week about productivity and just being on top of things and getting back into the swing of things. Daily rituals are really important. Like today I put on my jewelry, I dressed up kind of, put on jeans for once. The daily ritual of getting myself ready as if I'm going to work helps prime me to actually do a day of work even if it's just sitting at my desk. Goal setting is really important as well. So having daily goals and tasks that are achievable. So my goals for today are to finish reading through act two and then read through acts three and four. Honestly, I'm kind of skimming. This is not like a very deep read through. Again, I'm just really sort of marking down the main events as they occur. Any notes that I need to take, like little bits or details that I forgot as I was writing the draft, I've been jotting down as well. Then I need to edit a vlog and I really want to polish my query letter today. The query letter has been complete. It's been drafted for like a really long time. Like last year I wrote this query letter and I just want to make sure that it's still up to par. Like it still describes the book in its current form and also that it's like ready to show to agents. I am just so impatient to query right now. I have to constantly stop myself from just like sending out query letters to agents like now, like right now when the book isn't even, hasn't even undergone a first revision yet. And then after that, or I guess these aren't really in order, but I do want to figure out my upload schedule. This hasn't been the case for the last couple of weeks, but I want to go back to a once every two weeks, so a bi-weekly upload schedule. I'm going to be moving and all these transitional things are happening, so I want to make sure that I have like a backlog of videos. You know, it isn't really feasible with my current timeline to make a video come out every week with that, so we're going to a bi-weekly upload schedule. Those are the goals for today. This is sort of my last day of the week to get like a bunch of stuff done, so we're gonna be trying to hustle a little bit, but I do feel like I I've gotten, I've gotten like more control over myself basically. I mean, it's not really my fault. I've been horrifically jet lagged. I've basically completely switched the schedule that I'm on. I have my vitamin B. I had my like adaptogenic mushroom freaking masala chai coffee thing. I'll do whatever I have to to stay awake because I am not a nap person. I think I've said this before. My brain's also a little bit foggy. I just don't like naps. They completely throw me off my schedule. They make it so I can't sleep. My body does not like naps. So we're gonna try to avoid that at all costs today. In terms of my read through, the feelings I have about it are not positive. I'm still on the like good ones too, like the good parts of the book, Acts 1 and 2, which are really polished and were well received by like all three of my friends. So I don't really know what's going on. I don't know if it's just because I'm reading it a little faster, but I feel like the pacing's off. Some of the prose, the voice just reads as weird to me. So definitely like could use a strong line edit there. But you know what? I'm not allowing myself to edit as I go. Like I turned off that function. I'm in like comment only mode. So I'm leaving comments where I need to, but mostly I'm just like reading through, figuring out the series of events and we're gonna go from there. And I'll catch you guys up a little bit later in the day as things go on. Uh, talk to you soon, bye. It's 9 p.m. Friday still, I'm gonna call it. I just finished reading through act three, so that is pretty good. That means I only have two acts left to get through, which I think I can accomplish. If not tomorrow, then hopefully by Monday. But I think I'm gonna end this vlog tomorrow at night. I do have a day of like social activities planned, which thank God, because I've been missing hanging out with people. I've been missing going places, doing things. I need to get out of this house. I have not left in like a real way since I got here. So yeah, I've been doing that. Um, I did glance through my query letter and I think it's pretty solid, honestly. I One thing I wanna work on is my comps. Right now I have it comped to RF Kuang's Babel and Alexi Harrow's Starling House. And if those feel a little out of line with what the book is, it's because they kind of are. I feel like Babel is much more sweeping and historical and less character focused. I mean, it's still very character focused, but it's not as character focused as Mods is. So there's like definitely a disconnect in expectations there. Um, it's also not as dark academia, I feel like. And then Alexi Harrow's Starling House, that was more of a comp based off of 
the characters being like messy people and also the writing style like that voiciness is a little bit similar i feel like one thing that chris had said was that the atlas six would actually be like a good comp for this basically it's setting out to do the same things that the atlas six set out to do but is maybe accomplishing them in a more effective way which i can see but it's like weird to comp a book that i have made a not too positive video about sorry i sound so hoarse because i'm really tired and i did end up falling asleep again today i don't know when that's gonna stop but i hope it stops soon so yeah i do want to fiddle around with the comps for that i feel like most of the dark academia that's been coming out has not been adult which is where i've been finding some difficulty most of it has been young adult one book that i did want to check out was ava reed's a study in drowning even though that's why a ava reed only wrote adult before this that was like her YA debut so maybe that could be a good comp if it like lines up with mods in some way a little tip for comps which i think i've said in my comp titles tip video is that if you can try to point out something specific in each comp title that lines up with your book for example here i said character driven and literary leaning dark academia for Babel, which i guess isn't really correct and romantic mysterious contemporary fan fantasy like alexi harrow's starling house just like kind of showing why that comp fits your book in a very small way. Obviously I'm reading those because I don't think I'll be using those even though they are in the blurb that I've been using for every single video in this vlog series, but that's okay. I also put content warnings in the first paragraph of this query letter. I normally would not do that, but I've been really worried because there's some content in mods where I feel like if that sprung on you it's just like not great to spring that on people without warning in my opinion i think it's one of those things that very much could like turn people off of a book if they weren't expecting it or if they don't know that i am like handling those topics with care yeah and then there's like a little not a summary because it's not complete but sort of like a three paragraph version of events that's also a bit hooky and then i have my final paragraph that sort of talks about me it's so funny because the first time i was like querying my very first book i didn't have anything in this section basically it was like my name is lynn and i'm from california now it's like all of these credentials um i didn't put in my degree because i don't super think that it's that relevant but i put in my previous representation and how this is a new project that's something that if you are querying again you should include agents will want to know that this is a project that hasn't gone on sub i know some people who found success querying projects that have already gone on sub but for me this is one that hasn't gone on sub to editors and i want agents to know that and then i have like my short fiction credentials which are only two but one has been nominated for pushcart prize and then i also have my channel credentials i'm not really expecting my youtube channel to push the needle in any way i don't think it will frankly but i think it's a cool little inclusion and it's something i've worked very hard on and it's writing related and i don't know i'm just proud of it so i wanted to include it and that's basically the query letter for the synopsis i'm worried it's going to be a little long i do really enjoy writing synopses but it has been a while like it's been a couple years i'm just like sort of adding to it as i've gone through and like taken notes on the events of the book because i sort of needed to refresh my memory anyway with the synopsis you kind of want it to be a fairly straightforward retelling of the events at the same time i don't particularly like it when synopses read as super super dry they should be on the drier side but still engaging to read and i think the important thing for me with a synopsis is i want to get across that sequence of events like how one thing rolls into the next i want there very much to be like a flow and a plot that you can follow and it's almost like i want someone reading this to be like oh and then what happens next kind of like gossip that's kind of all you need query letter synopsis i have kind of a list of agents i have 13 agents on here some of them are closed at the moment because i made this list a little while ago but there are some agencies i still need to research yeah i think i'm gonna I'm so tired i'm so freaking tired i nap from like five to eight something genuinely truly ridiculous like that nothing can keep me up i don't know what's going on but i'm gonna say goodbye to y'all for now and then i'll see you guys tomorrow for another little update
All right, it is almost noon on Sunday, which means that I'm going to wrap up this vlog. So I'm currently somewhere in the middle, in the mud of act four of mods with my read through. I finished up act three last night. I mean, it's going good. Obviously I haven't finished yet, but I think I'm gonna be able to finish that read through in the next couple days. I've just been kind of busy this weekend. Life happens, you know? Once I finish the read through, I'm going to compile my notes and also go back and look at Chris, Kelly, and Sam's feedback and start to make a structured revision plan. Once I start that revision process, like the actual process of revising the text itself, not just making the plan. I'll start vlogging again, but I do feel like I've been inundating this channel with writing vlogs lately, so let me know if that's been a bother to you. The vlogs tend to do a little bit better than my craft videos, but I do miss making craft videos. I am an educator at heart, so I'm gonna focus on making like a backlog of craft videos for the next couple months when I'm moving and can't necessarily film as regularly. Um, but yeah, just let me know, I guess, what you'd like to see. All in all, I guess I'll leave off by saying I feel pretty good about this revision. Like, maybe suspiciously good, but so far, I haven't really noticed anything that requires a major change. I can definitely see where I'd be rewriting some chapters, deleting some chapters, adding some chapters and scenes and all that. Moving things around to make everything, like, hit a little bit harder, be a little more concise. But other than that, like, I don't see any major character arcs that need to be redone. I don't see any of the subplots needing to be scrapped or redone. The overall arcing plot itself I feel like actually has a pretty good flow to it which I tend to struggle with because I tend to write in a sort of choppy manner so sometimes the flow isn't as good like the sequence of events feels kind of off. I think it all feels relatively good. It's definitely gonna need a lot less overarching major hauls. Like, don't get me wrong, there's still gonna be a lot of work that needs to be done, but no like major rewrites at this stage. One of the things that I've noticed the most consistently in terms of what needs to be fixed is just making sure that setup and payoff work well. In the first couple acts of your book, you're going to set up some things like mysteries, character arcs, romances, whatever. You're going to set up these little like kernels of interesting plot points that will hook your reader in. And myself being the forgetful writer that I am, I've kind of forgotten about a lot of the smaller setups. Obviously none of the major romance arcs or anything like that, but little like world building details that were obviously sort of like Chekhov's gun needed to be paid off later that haven't been. So that's one thing that I would definitely say if you happen to be in the process of revising, this is why that first read through is important. And I'd say it's very important to read through your work with the perspective of a reader. The best way to achieve that is usually to give yourself a break, like a resting period, like with dough on the book. For me, I just kind of jumped right into it because it's been enough time since I wrote the beginning that I can kind of like look at it with fresh eyes. So yeah, one of the things that I tend to look out for is setup and payoff. Another thing that I feel like readers really tend to notice is just like character consistency and character in general. For me, and especially in a character focused book like Moths. I want the readers to have a very firm sense of who the characters are, what their roles are, and also have some curiosity about them. Like there should be some unanswered questions about each character that makes the reader want to know more about them. There should be this like unfurling of each character. That temptation has to be there. So when I read through my own work, that's what I tend to look out for because I feel like those are the things that I focus on as a reader of other works. That's what I want to come through very strongly in my work, I guess. So with that, I'm gonna leave you guys for now and I will see you in the next installment of this vlog or another chatty craft video, whatever comes first. Oh, actually it'll probably be the mods video where I just talk about mods and answer your guys' questions, which you guys have had so many good questions and I'm actually so excited to answer them. That's pretty much it for this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.